you're back. <laughs> well, maybe you haven't heard the others. We're talking about victory. Jesus is all about that. I mean, he's just not a loser. <laughs> I don't want to be a loser either. Um, it's not a competition, but in a sense, it's a con it's definitely a contest. It's a different it's a different sort of contest than sports and all. It's a contest for your life, and it's a contest against opponents. It's a contest against those big four that I call sin. I'm ready to fight, right? Ready to combat the flesh, the lower nature and yourself and the body and everything else. <laughs> and then there's the devil. That's an entity that you have to deal with, a personality. And then the world itself. And we're talking about the systems of the world, of course, not people. Although they're enemies of God, most of them. And so we have sort of a contest and sort of conflict and and all. So anyway, let's uh, pick it up in First John chapter two. I mean three again. Sorry, and uh, it's right here in the in the verses. I'll just say a few, and these aren't necessarily um, direct declarations of victory and sort of promises. But I call them promises because even the commandments, in my opinion, are promises. You say, yeah, right. That that's not true, and you're right. It isn't absolutely factually, you know, technically speaking, truth. But any commandment that we're given or any statement that uh, Jesus Christ or any of the apostles or even the Old Testament says that God expects us to do, what's cool is that we are enabled to do that. And that's that passage which we'll get to eventually. I kind of already quoted a lot of these that we're going to get to and explore. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. I think it's that verse 12 and 13. But 13 says, um, God is is doing in you working in you that which is good for i'm skipping some stuff for his good pleasure his pleasure it pleases him when you're doing his commandments right so god is the one that enables you to do the his good pleasure anyway i'm digressing these verses aren't direct declarations of promises but i believe that john is making just simple and very strong observations of what reality is a true believer i want to qualify what i'm going to say right away because he qualifies it remember he did say if you sin you have an advocate with the father so it feels like a safety net to me that when i do fail in having victory over the sin flesh devil in the world uh i can still um realize i can get right back on track that victorious track that narrow road and live righteously and godly in this present world. That's another one, by the way. <laughs> it's in Galatians chapter 1, verse 2, I think, or something like that. Anyway, it says here, um, little children, he's talking to the, you know, he's an older person. He sees them as young people in God. Um, he says, let no man deceive you. See, don't be tricked on this. It says, he that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Well, right there, we could just, there it is. Even as he is righteous, well, I know we're righteous because the blood of Jesus cleanses us and because of that I'm appearing before God righteous, no doubt. And I'm clothed in his robe of righteousness, I think it says in Isaiah and all. So it's good, but he's not just saying this position again. It's a power, it's a practice. Again, let's, let's take it for real. You can't, I don't think it's refutable what I'm saying here. He says, little children, don't let people deceive you. And that's the problem. There's false teaching, there's false doctrine, there's all sorts of stuff here. Let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, does righteousness, doeth righteous. You're doing it. It's not just a position or you're in name declared justified and righteous before God. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And who's the he? That's Jesus. So your righteousness can come alongside. Now, this is almost is like her her heretical, you know, burn him at the stake. But John said you can live righteous like Jesus is righteous, even as he is righteous. You are doing righteousness even as he is righteous. That's victorious living. Um, and it's accomplished by him. That's what takes the pride out of it. Like, oh, look at me. I'm living right. My conduct and behavior is conformed to his will and I'm obeying his commandments and all that. Yeah, but I'm empowered by Jesus Christ. There's other verses that will declare that as we go through these series. He the, Then he says, okay, now he contrasts that with the other person. He that commits sin is of the devil. 
Are you committing sin? <laughs> All right, so I've committed sin. Am I of the devil? No, I'm not on his side, but I have slipped. He caused me with his temptation, allurement, enticement, whatever, to fail. True. But he's kind of contrasting a person who's living righteous and he's a, is committing sin. Just probably, com I don't know what that Greek is, uh, that verb tense, but it's probably a continual, you know, you're living deliberately in sin is what he's saying. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. And here's a, here's a, here's a declaration of, of a promise that in the declaration of what Jesus did and why he came, why he came on the earth that he might destroy the works of the devil. What's the context? The sin life. So he came to destroy the works of the devil in your life and my life so that we can become righteous. Whoever is born of God. Now, this is a clincher verse. Woo! And this is uh, controversial of the interpretation of it. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. Okay, now I think he's obviously saying, and I did that caveat in the beginning, caveat of how if we do sin, my, my little children, I write these things that you sin not. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. And if any man. So he's not going to say a born again Christian. He, he would be contradicting himself. If that's not what his point is. Um, he's not going to say a, a Christian can't sin, period, ever. You're, you know, he knows better than that. And we know better than that. But he does say whoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. See, the seed of Christ comes into you, the nature of Jesus. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. He cannot. You can't. And I think if you put it all together, and I'm not trying to twist the words or interpret the words of God in John's writings here falsely. Um, but you, you just can't say that you're going to never sin. But he's, if you put it together, he's saying you're not living a life of sin. Thus, victory. Um, and I guess we could go on. Uh, no, we'll stop there. I'm trying to make this short. These next verses, we'll talk about those two most likely. But uh, in, this, in, the, in the evaluation and final analysis is that a born-again Christian lives righteously, victoriously. And a born-again Christian can't just continue in committing sin all the time. And a born-again believer, by observation, is going to grow in the Lord and mature to the point where you're living like Jesus. Thus, he who had victory over sin, flesh, the devil, and the world, Jesus Christ, that happens to the believer who's following him. I hope you say amen to that. I'm going to say it. Amen.